Hi and welcome to part three. In this part we're going to talk about the state assignment and we're going to give examples of using the counting order or the gray code as the codes we would assign the states. So let's think about this very simple state table where we have two states A and B and for this merely modeled state table we have two states A and B. We move to B if we get a one giving an output of zero then we move to A if we have an input of zero with an output of zero. From B, we move to A if we have an input of zero with an output of zero, and we stay in B if we have an input of one and we get an output of one. But the question is, how many bits do we need to represent these states? And so we need one to represent these two states. We could either have A as zero and B as one, or A as one and B as zero. It'd be like if it was this case, saying for this example up here that this one gets replaced with a zero and this one gets replaced with a one. But when we have more states, then it can be that the choice of the assignment of these binary codes to represent the state names actually has an impact upon our design. Here is another example. In this case, we've got four states, A, B, C, and D, as shown in this state diagram on the right and the state table on the left. And the question is, once again, how many assignments of codes with the minimum number of bits? Previously, we needed two different states. This time we have four different states. So how many bits this time? And then the other question is, does the actual code assignment, that is, which binary values we give to each of those states, actually make a difference to the cost? And I think I thought intuitively that there was no difference. And yet you will see from this worked example where we go through and choose codes that are matched with counting order versus gray code order, that actually it does make a pretty significant difference. And one is certainly better than others. So let's think about first of all, the counting order. That would be where A, B, C, D matches with 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. That is 0, 1, 2, 3. That's intuitively the way you think you should do it. However, depending upon what the state table and state diagram or what the sequence we're looking for is, it can actually change. So let's first of all write out this state table. We've got the present state being A, B, C, and D, matching up with the binary values there. And then we've simply written in here to the next state, the binary value codes for the letter symbols from the previous slide where we had and that matches up with the previous slide, and then the outputs stay as they were. So pretty straightforward there. Now we think about the second case where we've got a gray code assignment, and since gray code counts up where only one bit changes in between two consecutive numbers, then in this case between A and B, we have the second bit changing from zero to one. From B to C, we have the first bit changing from zero to one. And for C to D, we have the second bit changing from one to zero. And let's once again write out this state table based upon the initial letter-based state table. Okay, so you can see how we've simply replaced the letter A, B, C, and D with these binary values. And between the state assignment one, where we use the counting order, and the state assignment two, where we use the gray code order, there's a very slight difference in the coding of those symbols. Okay, so now comes the interesting part, where we think about how that state table translates into k-maps, because we want to find the flip-flop equations. Now we can assume d flip-flops, and remembering when we transfer from a state table onto a k-map, we interchange the bottom two rows of the state table. This is similar to the k-map where our counting order on the k-map is 0, 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 7, 6. Remember that? Like we switched the last two? Well, it's the same here. We switch these bottom two. Now I have this animation showing that the left-hand column is for the next state when x is equal to 0. And we see here how we have 0, 0, 1, 0 in the state table, 0, 0, 0, 1, because the, these have been flipped around. The color here is to represent where it lies in the state table. So blue matches with blue and green matches with green. And now D2 left-hand column matches up with the next state x equaling 0. If that wasn't entirely clear, remembering that this is x equaling 1 on this side, and then this side is x equaling 0, left-hand side. The same here, x equaling 0 on this left-hand side, x equaling 1 for this column. 
So now we have x equaling zero, this column here, and we write down zero, 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 one, which is matching up with these colored circles and go through and do that for each one. We have now x equaling one for flip-flop D1 and then x equaling one for flip-flop D2. And finally, the output when x is equaling zero, once again, it's on the left-hand side, output being z and when x is equaling to one. Okay, so now we have our k-maps. From our k-maps, we can draw some rectangles around the ones and we can work out what the equations are. This is transferred directly from the previous slide. We can draw some rectangles to cover the ones for the D1 flip-flop and then for the D2 flip-flop. And then finally for the output, we're gonna write these out in the sum of products form. So for D1, it is Y1 and not Y2, since this is when Y1 is equal to one, this is when Y2 is equal to zero. That blue rectangle corresponds to this one. And then this min term here corresponds to this one up here. We have when X is true, when Y1 is false, and when Y2 is true. That corresponds to that min term there. Okay, for D2, we have these three min terms. The first one, here, which is not x, y1, and not y2. The second one, which is here, is x being true, y1 being false, y2 being false. And the third one here, which is where x is true, y1 is true, and y2 is true. And then finally, this lone min term there for z, which is true when x is true, when y1 is true, and when y2 is true, giving a total gate cost of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus one, two, three, is 12, and three, giving a total of 22. So let's see if we can do better than that if we use the gray code. For the gray code assignment, we once again want to find the flip-flop input and output equations. We're going to assume D flip-flops as we did before, and we want to get the K maps for D1, D2, and Z. Now, because of the way the gray code is, then we can directly transfer from the state table onto these K maps. And this first one is for when X is equal to zero. The next one is for D2 when X is equal to zero, then when X is equal to one for D1, and then when X is equal to one for D2. And finally, the K map for Z where X is equal to zero and when X is equal to one gives us our three K maps there. It's important to understand about how this was transferred, where we currently have indexes being zero, one, three, two, so it matches up directly with the columns for the gray code assignment. Okay, so let's get the equations now by doing the two-level optimization. Well, it's a good idea to pause the video here and attempt it yourself, either by writing out the K-maps or by drawing on the PDF for these slides. And now the answer is to draw a rectangle around here and a rectangle around here, a rectangle around here, and a single rectangle or square around here. And then we transfer those two equations. For D1, we have Y1 and Y2 being this rectangle, and then X and Y2 being this second rectangle. For D2, it's easy, it's just whenever X is true, then D2 is true. And for Z, it's the min term, where X is true, where Y1 is true, and when Y2 is false, giving us a total gate count of one, two, three, four, five, six. We count this as zero, even though the literal count would be one, the gate count is zero. And then in this case, we have one, two, three. So based upon that, we really have to choose the gray code assignment because a gate input cost of nine is significantly better than the counting order state assignment where we had an input gate cost of 22. And now let's go ahead and use this gray code state assignment and map it to the technology. So remembering that D2 is equal to X as is, hence why X is connected directly to the second flip-flop here. And D1 is equal to Y1 and Y2 or X and Y2. And Z is equal to X and Y1 and not Y2.
So that matches up with what our initial circuit is. However, it was specified that we needed to use NAND gates with up to four inputs and inverters. So converting from our previous circuit to NAND gates only, we change our two ANDs and one OR into three NANDs, and we change the output for Z into two NANDs in a row, where one of the NANDs is essentially just an inverter because it only has a single input. Okay, that's the end of this part. In the next part, we're going to talk about one hot assignment, which is another way of assigning codes given the same state diagram. And we'll look at what the output KMAPS equations and the final circuit look like compared to what we had before. Okay, so I'll see you then.